I'm Ed Chung. I'm an internal medicine physician and I also have Meniere's disease. And again, I'm creating these series of videos to perhaps help other patients or people with Meniere's disease sort of understand this disease process and the syndrome. Um, and I'm just creating these videos as I try to do things to help myself to, to cope with and to deal with and hopefully to treat this Meniere's disease. And so if you looked at my just video that I just did last week, um, you know that my Meniere's disease right here as of the beginning of December of 2011, which I've had for over uh, 18 months now, has been progressing and been sort of been getting pretty bad with um, increased severe deafness. I'm probably got about 50% between 50 to 80 percent hearing, 60 percent hearing loss, um, along with increasing frequencies of these mini vertigo and nausea attacks to nearly every other day, to every third day, or, or every couple days. Um, you know, my symptoms may have been exacerbated or worsened by a cold that I had recently. However, this Meniere disease was getting worse and, and getting more frequent before this. So last week, um, at the end of November 2011, um, I did have. A little procedure done which was a, temp a tympanosity placed um, and what that is, is a little hole uh, to perforate the eardrum and to put a little called grommet which is like a little 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 tube in to keep the pressures from the external ear canal um, equal with the internal ear canal and <clears throat> the reason for that also I had that placed was also to start on uh, this minette device or minette therapy okay because um, this is sort of the next level of the less permanent and less invasive type treatment. This is an invasive procedure, however, um, it, it, it's it's not permanent and it doesn't cause any long-term damage. And I I want to try something else to get this try to get this controlled. Um, you can take a look at the link that I put in here for the the, um, the different levels of invasive treatments. Uh, and again, I'm going to create another video sometime in the future when I get through it um, of talking about the different levels of invasive and non-invasive treatments. Um, but I. So as you can see, I tried the diuretic pressure chambers. Now I'm trying this minette device before surgery. Currently, somewhere as of December of 2011, in the middle of everything, and um, you can take a look at the link. Um, I have to say the tympanostomy, which I'm going to try to show you a picture of <coughs> in a few seconds, um, didn't hurt, but it did ache for one day. Uh, it is an invasive procedure, and it has to be done by an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And what they do is they, they spray a, a very a concentrated amount of lidocaine or, or, or anesthetic to the topical eardrum, and then they perforate it. They actually little poke a little hole in it, and they put a little plastic grommet, which I'm going to try to show you a picture of this. Um, I'm going to try to show you pictures. This is actually a little mini microscope that I bought off of eBay. Um, you can also buy it on Amazon. It was like $35, $40 delivered from like Hong Kong. Great little device works works pretty good. Um, you plug it into the USB port. You can actually plug it into your ear and actually take a look at at, at, at the picture of your tympanic membrane and eardrum if you're curious. I was morbidly curious, and so that's why I bought this thing for thirty five forty dollars. Um, don't spend too much on it. it. It's not that great. The quality is not that great, and but interesting. And I can look at my own eardrum. Um, so I'm going to try to show you pictures of, 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 of this <coughs> uh, tympanostomy tube and the grommet that's sticking out from it um, right here. I'm going to have to cut and paste into this, this video, but you can sort of take a look. And So this is a normal looking left eardrum, nice and clear, no fluid. You can see the malleus bone there. So here's a right tympanic membrane with the uh, tympanic nostomy tube at the bottom of the eardrum. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but um, I'll cut and paste into this. The Mignette device, so, so the reason I did this is, again, um, if you look at this, there's the external ear canal, there's the panic membrane, the middle ear, and then the inner ear. And the problem with Meniere's disease is the middle ear is all filled with fluid, and there's this little round window that these bones push in on them that transmit sound. Well, the thought is, with the Mignette device, um, is that you plug up this external ear and you pump this full of, of like micropressure fluid. And this micropressure fluid transmits the air, increased pressure, and if you have a perforation or opening, it transmits into the middle ear, and the middle ear sort of milks or pushes in on the inner ear and milks out the, um, 
extra fluid. Whether it really truly works in real life, hard to say. However, this Minette device is FDA approved. And if you look at the official Academy of Otolaryngology, which is the official society or group that, that sort of overruns or sort of supervises or sort of um, helps with the, the different researchers and thoughts between all the ear, nose, and throat doctors, um, they do actually somewhat endorse and recommend this. However, every single one of the ear, nose, and throat doctors that I've seen, and even the person who put this tympanosity tube in, and even the, the, the consultation I did last week at the House Ear and Eye Institute, they're sort of plus minus, and they said, quote, we have not been impressed, unquote, with the, the findings and results and, and, and the end point of this Miette device. However, it's not invasive. It's, it's, it, well, it is invasive, but it's not permanent, and it won't hurt to try. So um, I've got a little Miette device here, which I'm going to uh, Sorry about that little lapse. Uh, anyway, so I've got a little Miette device here, which I borrowed from the ear, nose, and throat doctor. The thing's $3,500 out-of-pocket cash, but there is, a six, I think, a 30- or 60-day trial period you can go order it as long as your ENTT order orders puts the tympanostomy tube in and then orders it. I recommend if you're going to try this out, have your ENT doctor put the tympanostomy tube in first, then order the device because number one, you probably want to equalize and get used to the tympanostomy tube uh, for about a week or two, and then by that time it, the device will come, and then you'll have like 30 days from them to try it out. It's hard for me to say whether it's worth $3,500, but here it is. It's it's a glorified aquarium pump. I mean, literally, an aquarium pump. Um, you have this aquarium tubing. It's a pump. You turn it on. Okay, the red light, the little green light goes on. You plug it into the inner, inner ear, and then it starts to uh, flash. And then when it turns solid, it gives, over five minutes, these little micro bursts of these... Um, of of very minimal amount of low pressure, and you can you can sort of feel it or hear it goes, and then it for pauses for a few seconds goes, and then it pauses again, and this does it for about a minute, a minute minute and a half, and then it it stops for about forty seconds, and then it does it again for about another minute, and it does three rounds of this, okay, for a total of five minutes. You're supposed to do this three times a day, um, and. You're supposed to eventually see some results somewhere around maybe two, four, six weeks after starting the device. Um, too early for me to really say whether it's going to be beneficial or helpful for me. Um, what I can say, however, is that honestly, I don't know whether I really like it or not, or it's going to be more helpful than um, if you look at my prior video where I had the foot massager. So if you remember from my prior video clip before I had this tympanostomy tube, I was using this foot massager with a sort of suction to my middle ear and vibration. And this is the, I put my hand against my ear and I did that, that, that that's the special compression with the extra pressure, fluid, uh, fluid pressure. Um, actually I found that vibrational, but not even the vibrational, but the extra in, increased pressure from the external eardrum that I did with the vibration, foot vibration, that pushes in the fluid, uh, pushes the air in there. I find that actual increased pressure and sort of sort of squeegeeing out the air almost as effective or even more effective than this Minette device, to be honest with you. But I'm gonna give it a couple weeks to try this. The second thing I do want to say is that you probably can create your own Minette device for five dollars. What you do is you just buy a little ear earpiece, ear earplug. These things even come with the Minette device if you want to try it out. And then you buy one of these little easy suction, baby suction ear, ear cleaning bulbs, honestly. And you plug it together, you put it on the inner ear, and then as long as you have that tympanostomy tube in. If you don't have the tympanostomy tube, I wouldn't recommend doing this. You might blow out or hurt your eardrum. But as long as you have the tympanostomy tube in place, again, just like the Minette device, put it in the ear, and then you do these little micro, micro pressures like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and it blows that extra increased micro pressure into the outer external ear, then inner ear, and then hopefully milks out some of that fluid from the inner ear. Five dollars. 
$3,500. I can't say which one's better. This has been FDA approved and tested. This is not. This is very much like uh, there's a device out there made by this guy in Australia called the P100 by this company called Entex, E-N-N-T-E-X, um, which is about, I think it's like 50 euros, which is maybe 70, 80 dollars or 100 dollars US. And that one actually, there's one study if you look that actually shows that this is probably almost equivalent to the Miette device. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this for the next few weeks and I'll give you a little update when I tell you how I think it works or has not worked or what or, or, or other insight when I have, when I can. Okay. Um, but good luck everyone. Thanks.